One genre of games that I'm actually really into that I never really talk about on the channel is shoot 'em up games, or shmups for short. Whether you're talking about classics like R-Type or Gradius or Ikaruga, or you know more modern ones like Nanostray on the DS, that was actually this game that really opened my eyes to shmups. I was a huge fan of Nanostray 1 and 2 on the DS, used to play that competitively, and actually there was a shmup called Star Soldier R on WiiWare that I was a top 10 North American player in, and my best friend at the time was actually number one ranked. He won a contest with Hudson Soft, got a bunch of free swag, so we used to play a lot of shmups at my old apartment. and I always just really enjoyed them. I love the competitive edge, I love the leaderboard system and whatnot. So when Cinemora EX was announced to come to the Nintendo Switch, I was pretty interested in it. I knew that it was available on other platforms. There was a Cinemora on the PS3 and the Xbox 360, but the EX version is considered the definitive version of the game. Now this also released on the PS4, Xbox One, and Steam, but I figured, you know, it'd be nice to add another game to my Switch library. It's a shmup, and I like to be able to play my shmups portably, so why not? So I decided to pick up Cinemora EX. I waited for the physical version. It finally came in. And let me tell you guys something. Cinemora EX is going to be a future hidden gem. It's going to be a game that in five to 10 years, people are going to talk about this game and be like, yo, that was one of the best games that nobody really played on the platform. It doesn't matter if you're playing it on the PS4, the Xbox One, the Nintendo Switch, or Steam. People are going to think fondly of this game. So I want to tell you guys why I feel that Cinemora EX is a future hidden gem and a game that you should probably add to your collection. So let's find out about Cinemora EX and see what it's all about. So Cinemora EX is pretty unique in the fact that it is a shmup, but it has a very deep storyline. And when I say a deep storyline, I mean a very deep storyline. So much to the fact that Honestly, I was a bit confused. I got pretty lost in everything. What I've gathered is that there's two separate timelines going on with two separate characters as your main character that are battling against something called the Empire, which is slowly destroying the world, and they're battling against the Empire for separate reasons. One lost their son, and one had a whole race of species, the Inkies, wiped out by the Empire. So basically what you're trying to do is, is you're trying to destroy the Empire. And the game is it has a lot of voice acting, there's a lot of you know dialogue going on, and it could be a bit hard to follow because you're focused on the shooting mechanics, you're focused on the actual game and not the story. So I feel that the story did get a bit confusing. I would like to sort of go back and read further into the story and see more what's going on there, but you could sort of follow along pretty easily, I guess, for the most part. It's just so, some of the deeper stuff seems to get lost on me, but I don't really play shmups for story elements because that's not really a common thing in them. And another uncommon thing in shmups is, like I said, the voice acting. There's full voice acting in this game, and it ranges from pretty good to kind of mediocre. There's a couple characters that I felt could have been voiced a little bit better, but once again, voice acting, story, these aren't really big things for me in a shmup game. I'm interested in two things when I'm playing a shmup, gameplay and graphics. And that's where Cinemora EX really shines and really takes the ball and just runs with it. Let's talk about the graphics first. The graphics are absolutely gorgeous. This is one of the best looking shmups I've ever played, if not the best looking shmup I've ever played. It takes place sort of in this steampunk era world and the world is just so varied and gorgeous. Some of these levels and set pieces are just amazing. It's like if I lived in this world, I would actually go outside for more than just a cigarette. Like I would want to look at buildings and look at landscapes and stuff. It's just amazing. There's such graphical variety in the levels as well. There's some levels where you're playing in like a city that's being destroyed and there's stuff blowing up in the background and it's just so highly detailed to like these lush, beautiful jungle scenes to these underwater areas. It is so crazy the amount of variety in graphics in this game and the levels and the set pieces and they all look phenomenal. They all look fantastic. The use of color is great. Whether you're playing it docked, whether you're playing it in handheld mode or in tabletop mode, the game looks absolutely fantastic. And that's not even taking into account these huge boss battles. Sometimes the game will do like this 3D, you know, panning zoom sort of feature thing. You can just see a whole different side of the level. And then you have these bosses. The game is littered with tons of bosses and each of them are huge. Think of like a Shadow of the Colossus sort of boss, you know, that sort of style and that sort of you know size compared to you and that's what you're going up against they're all awesome 
all of the bosses were just so cool and I was always looking forward to the next boss fight and there's a lot of boss fights but I was always looking forward to it because it was always interesting to see you know what they would do next how they would be able to top the previous one and most of the time they were able to top it quite easily it was just amazing to see this variety in graphics grasshopper did the art design in the game and they really knocked it out of the park I think it's a fantastic looking game and it looks great no matter how you play it on the switch now of course graphics don't matter if the gameplay sucks and once again Cinemora EX shines in this so this is a horizontal 2d side-scrolling shooter I would say more 2.5d though because the graphics in the background are definitely completely 3d and like I said when it does that sort of panning shot you could definitely see the 3d graphics that they have and once again just amazing I can't say enough positive things about the graphics but in terms of gameplay the game doesn't have a health meter and it uses instead a time meter so basically you have a time at the top of the screen and you have to keep that time up by destroying enemies the more enemies you destroy the higher your time goes up so you're constantly having to you know dodge bullets kill enemies in order to get your time meter up and enemies drop certain things so some enemies will drop these little red orbs the red orbs power up your weapon and the more powerful your weapon, obviously the easier time you're gonna have with the game. So it's definitely recommended that you pick up as many red orbs as possible. There are also different color orbs, such as green orbs. Green orbs will give you your sub weapon. Each ship has its own um, sub weapon and you don't choose your ship at the start of the level. It chooses it for you because it's in the story mode. If you're playing the story mode, that is. And so it has a default sub weapon and you use that sub weapon. Pro tip. Use those sub weapons on the boss. Don't waste them on the common enemies. Trust me, you're gonna need them. So, you know, that's another thing you're having to factor in. Also, there's blue. And blue is something that does with time. And you could hold down a button and slow down time, which is really interesting because you don't really see that in bullet hell shooters. So when you collect these blue orbs, you can slow down time and navigate through these trickier areas where, you know, there's tons of enemies on the screen or there's tons of bullets on the screen that you have to avoid. It's a nice little touch. Now, like I said, you're constantly having to kill enemies to keep your time meter up. Now, another interesting thing is whenever you get hit, you lose all of your red orbs and you have to literally go and fly and collect your red orbs in order to get your weapon back powered up. And it's essential to do that because if you get hit and then you would get to a boss battle and you didn't collect your red orbs, you're pretty much screwed because a lot of these bosses are pretty challenging. And that's a very common thing in shmup games. This, like most shmups, is very challenging. And I don't feel it's, you know, necessarily too hard or anything, but it's a very fair challenge. It is a challenge that you should expect from a bullet hell shooter. And it feels great in this game. I think they did a great job balancing things as far as difficulty is concerned. And it just feels good. Everything about it feels really good. Aside from the main story mode, there's a bunch of other modes as well. There's the arcade mode, which, you know, cuts out the story and just gets you into the levels. There is, um, you know, ranking mode where you can get a high score and then post that high score online. And there's also a boss battle mode where you can you know, uh, fight different bosses and, you know, figure out their strategies so that when you're playing in other modes, you can, you know, defeat them quicker or whatnot. Or if you just want to fight some of the big, huge bosses that are featured in this game, there's just a quick way to do it. So Cinemora EX, wow, um, it really surprised me with how good it is. But there is one problem if you're picking it up on the Nintendo Switch. It is more expensive than all other versions of the game. The Nintendo Switch version is $30, the PS4, Xbox One, $20. It's currently $10 on Steam. So price is a bit of a factor. And I've seen other people talk about the price and say, oh, $30, that's a little bit too much for a 2D shooter. But is it really? I mean, I've bought 2D shooters at $60 before, you know, brand new, and a lot of 2D shooters that come out, you know, aren't budget titles. You know, there are budget 2D shooters, but your main franchises, your bigger players, they seem to always be a top tier price. So to me, the $30 isn't that big of a deal. It is nice that it is cheaper on the other platforms, but you are getting the portability aspect for with the Nintendo Switch version. If the Nintendo Switch version is your preferred version, if you enjoy the portability aspect, should you pick up Cinemora EX? Definitely. If you're a fan of shmup games, I honestly don't care what you play this game on, what platform you decide to play this game on. You just need to play this game, period. It is so good. I had so much fun with it. I'm going to continue having so much fun with it. I cannot say enough good things about this game. Sure, the story is convoluted and confusing. Sure, the voice acting is a bit off sometimes. But the graphics, the gameplay, it's so good. It's so much fun. Definitely a future hidden gem. You will see this on hidden gem videos 10 years from now if YouTube is still a thing, which hopefully it is because I have fun doing it.
But yeah, definitely people are going to think very fondly of this game. It's going to be a hidden gem game. It's definitely going to go down as a very underappreciated shooter. So if you're into shoot 'em up games, this is a no brainer. I don't care if you buy it on the PS4, the Xbox One, the Switch or Steam. Pick this game up, play this game, check it out. You're going to have some fun if you're a fan of shmups. And that's all I really got to say about this game. It's a good ass game. Um, let me know in the comments if you played either Cinemora or Cinemora EX and what you thought about the game. And if you plan on picking it up, what sort of things you are looking forward to playing in the game. And thank you for checking out this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this review. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And like I said, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think about how the game looks and what you liked about it if you picked it up. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. Later.